Today we are talking about garage sales and insurance problems. <laughs> so we'll do the insurance problems in just a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, we need your advice and we could really use some help from you guys to help us to know what to do. Um, but first of all, we had the uh, town garage sale days today. Once a year, our entire town has garage sales. And today was the day. And we hit it big. And I mean big. I am so super excited. <laughs> My daughter and I were just dancing in the car the whole way. And I'm going to hit the big finale at the end. So I'm going to start with some of the littler things that we got. But we just, I don't know, I probably have at least $1,200 probably worth of items. And I spent about, uh, I don't know, 75 or 80, somewhere around there. I lost count and frankly, I didn't get it all added up before the show. So today... I'm going to show you these deals because everyone tells me, oh, I don't have time for garage sales and it's too much of a pain to go around and that kind of thing. And I've lived in four states and I have always had success like this. And so I don't think that this is just um, something that's here in Colorado. I do think that some areas have better garage sales than others, but you just have to find where they're at in your area. So. Let's get started with my deals. And then Mike's gonna join me in a little bit and we're gonna do our giveaway in just a little bit too. So, first of all, I got this really pretty yellow bath mat. Brand new, never been used for a dollar. I needed a new one, so I was really happy. It matches my bathroom. Matches the yellow and white bath towels that I got that are free from my aunt. So I was really happy that I got those. Then, my daughter got this notebook for it free in the free pile. Then, I'm going to, um, let's see. I don't know if you can see all of them, but all these puzzles here. So I got all these. All these puzzles here. All these puzzles over here. I got 25 puzzles for 25 cents each. They were marked a dollar, and I asked the lady if I took them all, would she take a quarter for them? And she said, sure. So <laughs> I got all these puzzles for $6, and then in the end she came out and she said, oh, here's three more, and she threw in three more for free. <laughs> so <laughs> we got a huge deal on these puzzles. And you may wonder why someone who hates doing puzzles is buying 25 puzzles. Well, I have a sister-in-law that loves to do them, a grandmother that loves to do them, an aunt who loves to do them, and I figured if they aren't ready for any puzzles yet, then I can donate them to um, our local nursing home or um, retirement center, anything like that. They love things like this, and these are some really nice puzzles, and they were only a quarter. So. I was really super excited. You can see some of them are really big. There's like 500 pieces and 1,000 pieces. There's several thousand and seven, uh, 750 pieces. So we got a really good deal on the puzzles. Um, then I got this sweater, which I just thought was very cute for 50 cents. And I brought it home and tried it on and it fits. It's really similar to the one that I have on now that I love. So I was happy about that. My daughter got these shirts here and this is like a little workout type hoodie thing for 50 cents each. Then I was gonna go buy one of these air reflectors. And what you do is you put this on top of your vents that have furniture over the top of them. So like over here, on our, in our kitchen, we have a bench, but the um, air vent is right under it. So I'm gonna put this air reflector over the top so that the air blows out instead of just straight up. I was going to go to the hardware store and get this, and it was gonna be $6, and I paid 20 cents. 
Ah, I was so happy because I was just going to go buy this. Then, um, we have, I love all kinds of old pots and pans for my garden. And I drill holes in the bottom and then make planters. Although this is really nice. I might keep it as a pitcher. But the lady had $2 on it. So I got it for a dollar. So I was really happy about that. So then, at that same garage sale, she had all of these acrylic paints. And they were $2 each. They're completely full. They're pliable. You can see that they're still really good. And I got these for a dollar each. And Jack and, <laughs> Jack and Mike and my son <laughs> don't know uh, what the deals I what I got today. They were gone hiking. So <laughs> I'm just now showing them my deals too. So, so um, Dave and Jack like to do the painting. So I got this for them for a dollar a tube. And I think these are like six or seven dollars, I think, at Hobby Lobby. I didn't look it up, but I think that's what they are. Um, then we got these little garden trowel and little uh, hoe for... 25 cents and since I'm the ever faithful gardener, I think I'm gonna drill holes in these and use them in my laundry room for handles on my cabinet. <clears throat> then next, let's see. We, um, okay, so <laughs> there was a whole pack, a whole container for a dollar that was filled with this wrapping paper. And it had a bunch of Christmas wrapping paper and kids wrapping paper. And honestly, I didn't really need any more kids or Christmas wrapping paper. I had enough. And I was looking at it because I liked these ones for the girls, but I didn't want to buy the whole thing. And it, the whole thing was a dollar. And the guy said, well, I'll give them to you for 10 cents each. So I got wrapping paper for a few birthdays for the girls for 10 cents for each one. So 40 cents for all four. Ah, I don't know. Then, okay, then um, we found this candle and it was 25 cents and it's really cute, pretty, hardly, I think they used it once, but it's basically brand new. Then my daughter, and I don't know if you can see these, my daughter is a trying to apply for jobs at a coffee shop and she found these little mocha coffee cup earrings or whatever type coffee earrings. So I don't know if you can see it if I'm too far away, but she said, mom, I should wear these if I get a job interview for the coffee shop and then they'll give it to me. I was like, yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> Let's see. So then um, we got this other brand new candle, 25 cents. It's a really pretty purple container. My sister-in-law loves these kind of candles, so we'll probably give it to her for Christmas. Then I got these cups and I love these cups for my tea and when we go up into the mountains this is a great way for me to have my tea and keep it really hot but I didn't want to invest in a huge thing like this because you know I just didn't want to spend the six or seven bucks for it I got all these for a dollar I think it's almost completely full there's only like a couple missing so I got that for a dollar I was happy about that then let's see what else oh yes so here, we don't have a big cooler. So when we go to the mountains, um, we have to take, oh, Pepsi bottles and things like that for, um, for our water and stuff. And it doesn't stay very cold. It does okay, but it's not real cold. I found this and she had $5 on it. And I asked her if she'd take three and she did. So I got us a new cooler for $3. I saved, I don't know, 25 bucks or so on that, I think. Then I found these um, mixing, what do you, well, they're actually a watering can, I guess. But what I'm gonna use them for is my soap. And one of them, oops, it must've fallen. Oh, here it is. She had 10 cents for each of these. And I'm gonna use these for mixing my soap when I do my different swirls and that kind of thing on my soap because it has such a long spout. I can pour it in there without dumping my soap all over the edges and that kind of thing and get a more precise pour 
on my soaps when I do that. So I just, I was going to spend $6 on each of these because it's really super handy. And I got them for 30 cents. I was so happy. 30 cents for more soap making supplies. Then, let's see. Where are we at now? Oh, yes. So my daughter found these sandals and she said they look just like mom, but she got them. So she was super happy. I don't, I think she paid 50 cents for these. I'm not sure. But she had those. And just to update, if you're just joining me, today we're talking about um, my garage sale deals on our citywide garage sale. And I'm Tara from Living on a Dime. And I have Mike in the background who's going to join me in just a little bit. This, then she also found, which I think somebody just threw in, are these cute little teensy tiny pens and pencils. These would be so handy for like in the car or in your purse or something. So those were little, really cute. Then towards the end of the garage sale, we ran by a free pile. And they had this shoe organizer right here. Really nice, there's no tears or anything. I don't know if I'm gonna use it, but I grabbed it up in case I can find a place. But this is really good for putting like paper towels or wipes or dusting supplies or anything of your cleaning supplies. This works really good for that. So I thought, well, if I don't use it, um, bring that letter when you come. So if you don't use something, just bring it home and then you can get rid of it later. But you know, at least I have it if I want it. Um, then they also in the same pile had this fish tank. And my oldest son has recently really gotten into fish. I didn't know he liked fish before, but he went off to school and he <laughs> really has gotten into fish. Well, yesterday he found a 50 gallon fish tank with a stand, gravel, food, everything the guy was asking fifty dollars and he got it for ten dollars <laughs> i couldn't believe it my son takes after his mother well he doesn't really need another fish tank but he can use the net and he can use all these little decorations and that kind of thing and i think maybe the light also and then it also came with these covers here and he needed these covers so our cats don't eat the fish so this was all free. And this is probably, I don't know, $20, $25 worth, I think, because it has a special light on here. And um, he, my son was super excited to see this because of course it was free. So that was another great deal. Um, I'm running out of room here. So my last three things. <laughs> oh, wait, and my daughter, oh no, I have a couple more over there I didn't realize. Oops, okay, well, I'll just tell you about them. I found this galvanized bucket and, oh, sorry. It has $2 on it and I did pay $2 for this. It's brand new. I love galvanized buckets. I don't have one this shape. And so I was really happy to just get one like this. So I paid the full two bucks for it, but I was really happy to get that. And then over here, which I don't know, Mike, can you turn the camera so they can see? I don't know if you can. I got, um, I got, <laughs> we got so much stuff. I got this lunch bag for 50 cents. We might need that. Then I got this lamp for $3. She was asking five and she took three. I don't know if you can see the skateboard over there, but it was, two dollars and then we got this little fish night light that I was going to get for my son and that was a dollar I think so we got those items and here's the best part of it all I went to a yard sale and they didn't have anything but they did have this lamp here and they had this lamp here. And what is so cool about this is I have been wanting in my kitchen a new lamp up here. Um, and I love these Tiffany lamps. And I have been looking for six months or a year. And, well, at least a year. Because I found one last year that I paid $2 for, but it was broken. 
And after I got home, we kind of realized that it was going to be too much of a pain to try and fix it. So I've been looking and looking, went to Lowe's and Home Depot. Excuse me, it was $100 for the cheapest, smallest one they had. And I really wanted it, but I was kind of holding out. Well, I went to a yard sale and they had these two Tiffany lamps for $50 each. And I asked what's the lowest they would take. And the lady said $35. And I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I said, well, I'll come back, and if they're still here, then I'll maybe get one. So we went and did some more garage sales. We came back, they were still there. Her husband was there then, and I said, well, yeah, I'm trying to decide. I knew I wanted one, but I wasn't sure which one. So I him and hawed, and finally decided on this one, because it's smaller, and I said, um, your wife said it was $35. Is that offer still good? And he said, oh, well, she thought you were going to take more than one lamp. Well, that's not true at all. She knew I was only looking at one lamp. And I think he just said that because she told him that she would take $35 and he wasn't happy about it. <laughs> so he said, well, I'll do $40. And I said, well... I said, no, I said, I was ready to pay 35, but I don't really think 40, um, I don't really have 40 to spend. And he's like, oh, whatever. She, she told you earlier, just take it. So I got this one. So I came home and the tag is still here and I looked it up and this lamp, I was, I could, I just about died. This lamp was $327 dollars online and I got it for $35. So then I looked up this one just out of curiosity and this one was $428 and I got it for $35 because I went back after I saw it was $400. I went back and picked it up and I thought, you know what, I can use one in my entryway and one over my kitchen. So this is my huge, super good deal. <laughs> For the week, I was so excited. Now Mike has another to-do project. <laughs> he has so many projects to do, but I am just so excited. I really have wanted a Tiffany lamp for so long, and I think these are just so pretty, and I can't wait to get them up, and I just hope we can get them up before they break, <laughs> because I just really, really like them. So anyway, that's my garage sale deals for the week. Um, Ellie and I spent three hours garage selling and we probably got $1,200 worth of items for about, I don't know, 80, 85 bucks, somewhere around there. Maybe not even that much. Um, so it really is worth your time and energy, especially if you could find the community type garage sales and that type of thing. So I'm going to get this cleared off. Just give me about a couple of seconds and Mike's going to come forward. There were some people that were asking, like, where are you going to store all this? Gonna have to get a storage shed. Oh, <laughs> so where am I going to store all this? Okay, so just so you know, the puzzles in that, they'll go right away to whatever family members want them. So I'm not going to be storing the puzzles. The lamps, they're going to be put up probably within the next week or two because I don't want to risk them breaking by sitting all the time waiting to get them put up. So I'm probably going to have Mike try and get them up sometime this week if possible. The other stuff isn't really anything that that's big. I mean, the cooler we needed anyway for our picnics up in the mountains and the wrapping paper will just go in with the wrapping paper and everything else is just odds and ends like the lamp's gonna go straight on my nightstand that doesn't have a lamp. And my soap buckets will just go straight to my soap buckets. We ran out of paint, so the paints are gonna go straight to refill what we ran out of. So. This seems like a lot of stuff, and it is. Our car was completely full and I was having to hold stuff on my lap. But it's stuff that we would use or we already used. And like the puzzles, you know, we're gonna take them to the retirement home if um, the family members don't want them. So it's not like I'm just keeping a bunch of junk around that I'm not gonna use. So anyway, yeah, this is not an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> which it may look like, but you know, you, 
we have this sale once a year so i usually get a huge garage sale haul like this a few times a year and, and otherwise it's smaller individual things that i buy when i hit one or two garage sales so yeah i'm not just going to keep it all was that the all questions a lot of people seem to love it they love lights yay thank you you guys like my lights i'm so excited ellie and i were doing happy dance okay i'm not very good at dancing but hey we were super happy so <laughs> All right, let me scooch this out of the way and get Mike over here. And we're going to talk to you guys about our insurance problem that we would like your advice on. I don't know if anyone else has gone through this. Ugh, wow, that's a Leaning Tower of Puzzles, huh? <laughs> if you're a big crash off camera, you know why. Yeah, <laughs> it's the puzzles. Oops. Okay. Let me just do that. Adjusting our professional setup here. Yes. Okay. Let me sit down so Mike can make sure I'm on camera. Am I on camera? Okay. And just so you guys know, we are with the Homestead Network now. And so you can check us out every Saturday at 6 p.m. Um, that's when we're on and right after us is um, Deep South so check them out I will tell you again and then we're gonna do our giveaway also they're pretty awesome. Dave can you Deep go South? grab the books before you um, come please the stack in the office I forgot to get the books um, yes they're awesome they're <laughs> they're great I love them they're kind of like they're kind of like us <laughs> Um, making their own stuff all the time. So here's, did you bring the insurance paper with you? No. Oh, it's right there. So here's the situation. And we would really like your input to know how we should deal with this because we have no idea what we should do. <laughs> we should have everybody call in. <laughs> yeah, everybody call in. So here's the situation. My niece was in a car, my niece who we have guardianship over, um, was in a car accident last March. And we, they, the person that hit her told her insurance company, which is MetLife, that it was my niece's fault in the accident. That's what the lady told her insurance company. She did not accept responsibility, even though she received the ticket and she was at fault. So we were like, that's fine. You can investigate. You can get the police records. We know that our niece um, didn't do anything wrong. She didn't get the ticket. The lady ran a stop sign and si side swiped her. I actually asked the policeman and he told me that he cited the other party even for what it was for, for basically running a stop sign. <clears throat> yeah. So the problem was my niece drives almost 25 miles each way to work and school every day. We went to go get a rental car and they weren't going to pay for it because she had not claimed responsibility, the lady who hit her, with her insurance company. And her insurance company said, well, you can get a rental car. But if you get a rental car, you have to pay for it and we'll reimburse you because uh, it was her fault or because um, our client told us that it was your niece's fault. So then I called our insurance company and they said the same thing. They said, well, you can rent the car, but we're not going to reimburse you because um, they haven't claimed fault yet. And so we couldn't get a rental car. And I said, okay, so if we use our own vehicle, another vehicle, and drive her back and forth and put all this mileage and extra gas and things on our vehicle, which it shorted us a vehicle because we have kids going to school in two different cities, 40 miles away. Mike works, you know, away. We were having doctor's appointments and all this. So it was a major pain to be without her driving to school um, and having to use my car then. So they finally settled. 
And it was seven, seven or eight weeks later, I don't remember exactly, but it was about seven or so weeks later, they finally got the police report and finally claimed, uh, or finally accepted fault. Because they, the police report was very specific that it was the other lady's fault. Yeah. So now here's my question and here's my problem. Now, they don't want to reimburse me for the mileage that she put on our car going back and forth to school and all the days that we were out of vehicle. It was 53 days and over 2,200 miles that she used. And now, they are wanting us, they are only wanting to reimburse us for... Um, $636 for this. Now, when I talked to my insurance company, they said that they usually pay $25 a day for rental cars, or if you don't get a rental car for loss of use on your vehicle that you do use. So this is the problem. And our insurance company, um, you know, Robert says, why isn't your insurance handling this claim? First well, of our, all, our insurance is not MetLife, Robert. Yeah. That's the other company. The other company, other our group. insurance is Allstate. MetLife is the other person's insurance. And so here's what we're wondering. Our insurance company told us they would pay $25 a day. But we were without a vehicle for 53 days, and that does not include the week after we got the check for the time that it took us to find the car. So May, May 2nd, we got the check. We couldn't get her vehicle till May 9th, but I didn't charge them for all those days from May 2nd to the 9th. Now MetLife, the other person's insurance company, is saying that they're gonna only pay me $636 which is, let's see, $12 a day. I'm wondering, do you think that this is fair? Should, and, oh, okay, so what well, happened? No, they did pay for the car. They're just refusing yeah. to pay for the time that we weren't able to use yeah. the car because they dragged it out for eight weeks. Yeah, we finally got the car paid for. We went through our insurance company finally, and then they sent us a check, they told, the other person's company that they sent us a check on April 12th, they may have, but we didn't receive it until May 2nd. And what we're wondering is, um, let's see, I lost my train of thought because there was one more important fact on this that I was trying to think of. Um, yes, Kathy, we were thinking that too, not to sign the check for the lower Oh, that. Amount. Oh, yes. So that was it. So today, they, they just send us a check. Well, it's not on here, but they just sent us a check for the $636 and I didn't agree to that. And I told them that I was filing a complaint with the insurance commission and I did. And this is stated the same day that I filed the complaint with the insurance commission. So, so, the, so the insurance commissioner has not reviewed it yet. Yeah. So the insurance commission hasn't reviewed it yet. So what we're wondering is, do I keep fighting to get the entire $1,325 or because we don't know that it's worth going to court for this and spending thousands of dollars on a lawyer and all of this. We just spent a year and a half in court fighting his parents over custody of our niece, which is a whole ridiculous story, but anyway. So we really don't wanna be messing with court again for this. But at the same time, I don't think they should be getting away with this. <laughs> so do you guys have any other su suggestions or how could we do this? Um, somebody said this is how they work. Yeah, so, but I don't have to accept this. Is that right? Yvette says yes, don't settle. So how do <clears throat> we settle this? Can you guys tell us how we should go about settling this? I mean. We don't know that it's worth hiring a lawyer to get another 600 bucks, but... Yeah, we found court works well if you're trying to do something noble. But when it comes to uh, hiring an attorney to recover a small amount of money, uh, I think you end up spending more than you get back on that. Um, in this situation, we did report it to the insurance commissioner and... 
I think it's likely they may do something on that, but we haven't yet heard anything. But we are not signing the check that they've sent. Oh, and the thing about renting the car is uh, because they had not, they had denied responsibility because they had not received a police report and their client told them that it was our niece's fault, even though the police officer said it was their client's fault. But because they said they didn't have the police report in hand, they were assuming that their client was right. Well, and now everyone says your insurance company should pay. Our insurance company is refusing to do anything else. Well, our insurance company made all the arrangements to get them to pay for the car. But not to get but reimbursed. Not to get reimbursed. They, did, they were outraged that the other company didn't pay the amount of the uh, car usage that they had. And they they suggested that we didn't they suggest that we contact the insurance yeah so they suggested we contact the insurance commission and i did file a complaint with them and i haven't heard back yet our company also went through some process they have where their company contacts the other company to try to work it out and the other company just metlife refused uh now our company um we live in colorado and i've never been in a state like this before but apparently they have to accept responsibility. It's not, there's not an outside entity that decides. Well, excuse me just a second. Let me just say, everyone keeps saying this. We are not cashing the check, just so you know. We know that if we uh, if we cash the check, we know that's it's a, a trap. It's yeah. a trap. <laughs> we know that's a trap. We've been through court enough to know that. <laughs> and we are not cashing the check. So thank you guys for that advice. Um, I guess I forgot to put that little bit in there, which is a major part, but um, we are not cashing the check they sent us today. We just aren't sure how should we go forward from here. I mean, do we just wait for the insurance commissioner to investigate and then do we sue or we weren't sure? So let's see. Um, there are a couple people saying that we should contact our company again since they represent us. So several people Ginger are says, saying that we should contact our insurance company. So do you think that we should? Because we had coverage on this and they told us that we would. Ginger says get a free legal consult. We could well, have maybe we should. We could have a lawyer send a nasty gram. Um, let's see. Starla says your insurance company should help you get it back. It should be part of the payment. Call someone at the main offices of your company. Get a free, okay, so everyone agrees that we should get a free consult with the lawyer. Okay, we'll do that. Um, Julie says look into small claims court. Ugh. Which is something we could do. <laughs> we can do that. Um, everyone says our insurance company should be doing something. That's kind of what I was thinking. Right. I was thinking all we'll states should do this. <laughs> So we're gonna give them a call on Monday. Let me see what our YouTube readers are saying. Um, Big Family Homestead says you should not be talking to the other company at all. Your company should be. Yeah, so Brad, what do we do when our company says they're not gonna do anything? That's what well, we're wondering. Our company, we ended up talking to the other company because in the past we've only had liability insurance and we have two cars that have full coverage and we didn't realize that we were able to, after a while we called our company and said, we're just super frustrated with this. And they, they took it over and they were very quick to try to push the other company through. But MetLife kept dragging their feet. Um, and the people with our company kept kind of, seemed to be pretty aggressive about that. It's mostly on the, it's unclear on the reimbursement for mileage. They See, they're telling us, that they're only gonna reimburse us on the day that Allstate told them, even though we didn't get the check that day. There's no way we could have, we didn't, we don't have $4,000 well, just laying around and to- And MetLife's theory was, you know, okay, so we said we're not gonna pay you, but you should have gone out and bought another car anyway. <laughs> we're thinking, we don't just borrow money to buy cars. Yeah. So if you say you're not gonna pay for it, we're gonna wait until it's all settled out. And we would have gone to court for sure, uh, for the actual cost to reimburse the car, to replace the car. Um, but because the mileage thing is a little bit less money, we're a little unclear. So, But we do have a complaint out to the insurance commission, which I think will carry some weight. Um, and it sounds like we should probably contact our company based on what you guys are telling us. Yeah, because we just, normally we have liability and we don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> and, yeah, that's a good one, Brad. 
<laughs> Big family owned said we should take him out. Yeah, no, I kind of think that's not the best idea. <laughs> Um, Gonna be on the news really quick. <laughs> hey, just make sure we get our living on a dime.com t shirts before we do. Living on a dime behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if we can get t shirts made up for that. <laughs> um, so let's see. So, does can anyone answer this question? Do you think it's reasonable for us to be asking for it until we received the check? Or is, does anybody know if April 12th, even though we didn't receive the check until May 2nd, is that the date that, um, how do we do that? Because in our minds, we should be reimbursed until the check was in our hot little hands. And they're saying no. So can anybody tell me that? Let's see. Karen says we should contact our company and tell them we call the <laughs> insurance commission prison edition. <laughs> Let's see. Full coverage does not always include rental coverage. Okay, so why didn't we rent the well, rental car? No, our company did say that we could... Our company told us that we could use them for the rental coverage instead of the other lady's company. But that if she, if they didn't agree immediately, if the other company didn't agree to accept the fault, then we would have been responsible for all that cost. And of our company said they would only pay for 30 days of a rental car. And it was 53 days. So we would have been stuck with a $2,000 rental fee. Pro I don't know how much, but I don't know. Whatever 30 times another 20 days is. How much is that? 30 times 20? Six, seven. Six. Okay, so another six or $700 that they weren't going to pay for. So that's why we didn't do that. Um, let's see. What date was the check postmarked? I think it was like April 12th or 13th, but we didn't get it then. Um, let's see, who else, does anybody else have any, how was the check delivered? Off-grid, they wanted, um, they wanted in the, um, postal, U.S. Postal Service is how it was. Um, let's see, think, think of it this way. Senpai pigeon. <laughs> Senpai pigeon. <laughs> Uh, think of it this way. If they had been liable, you wouldn't have waited that long for the check. They drew this out and are expecting you to be compliant. Big Bear Homestead. Yes, that's exactly what we're thinking, but we just don't know how to fight it. So I guess what we'll do is contact our insurance company first. And check with the insurance commission again. And check with the insurance commission. And then I guess we'll just have to file another lawsuit. Ugh. Yeah, well, we're not um, sure about that, but definitely going to be chewing on MetLife a little bit. Yeah, so I would say if you have MetLife, don't use them. They're no well, good. Well, of course, they'll fight <laughs> for you and take advantage of that teenager that you hit because yes, your dog's exactly. were loose in the car while you were turning I the corner and not paying attention. Um, let's see. You can get an accident lawyer, but they usually want a third of the settlement. Well, that's what I was concerned about, that we would spend all this money for a lawyer and all this time and it wouldn't be worth all our time and energy. So we've been through court enough that we know I'm not getting reimbursed for any of the hours. And I mean hours I have spent dealing with the insurance company and it really hacks me off that because I'm a stay at home mom, they think that, um, you don't need to be reimbursed. I don't need to be reimbursed for anything because I haven't lost work. Because well, you, got... you don't drive kids places in the car that somebody else has. <laughs> just, <laughs> aggra right. oh, just aggravates me. Okay. Moving so, on. Thank you, everyone, for your advice. We really appreciate it. We really had no idea what to do. Like we said, we normally carry liability, so we've never had this problem before. Um, so anyway, to our giveaway, something fun. We are giving five? away five books. Drum roll, please. I love this book so much. I have like a thousand of this one, <laughs> probably fifteen hundred of that one, and twenty five hundred of this one. It's really awesome. He can't even park in the garage because he has so many copies. I have boxes and boxes of them just in case the one I'm using wears out. But they're awesome. <laughs> so if you want to help Mike out and buy a copy. <laughs> 
But today we're giving one away. We actually, we are giving, um, what's three times five? We're giving away 15 today because I was going to give away three copies. But one of our readers, <laughs> she went above and beyond the call of duty in helping spread the word for us. Um, our website has been tanking because of changes with Pinterest and Facebook the last several months. And that's really hurt. <laughs> that's really hurt. <laughs> We're still getting a lot of stuff out there. It's just... Yeah, just not enough to bring in. So one of our readers went above and beyond the call of duty in helping us spread the word. So we're giving a bonus deal to her. And I'm going to announce that one first. It is, and I don't know how to spell that last name. It's Demetri Carol Demetropolis. Carol Demetropolis. You're on there right now. I just saw you, Carol. So I know you're on there. So I am sending you one just because <laughs> she posted probably three or four hundred <laughs> entries at least every day twice a day i would go in and and, and approve like a hundred of her comments thank so, you carol. <laughs> thank you carol we appreciate all your hard work um then the other three winners of we're given the whole five books the whole five books is i'll let you announce it here hold on let me Looks like Rhonda Bodie. Rhonda Bodie and Elizabeth Pendleton. Elizabeth Pendleton oh, and I need, I need to make this more dramatic. dramatic. Heather Junker. Yes. Yay. <laughs> so those, awesome. So those are our you three. You guys are awesome. Yes. Those are our three winners, and we really appreciate everyone helping get the word out on our website. Do we need so, to send us? Yes. So if you four people, Carol, Rhonda, Elizabeth, and Heather. If you would send me an email at editor at livingonadime.com with your mailing address, I will get these out to you this week. And um, that's going to be so awesome. I know it's going to be so awesome. And if you want, you can go to livingonadime.com and purchase your own copy. We, I don't know, did we decide if we're doing a sale or not soon? <laughs> we didn't decide. <laughs> we didn't it depends decide. depends on how many people write for it, maybe. Yeah, it depends on how many people write. Okay, if you want us to do a sale real soon, um, let us know. <laughs> and we'll do a sale. Mike, um, Mike and I are kind of on the fence. We thought maybe we would do a 4th of July sale. So if you would like. Wait, that's just a few days from now. <laughs> oh, is it? Yes. What's the, oh, thing. well, we may or may not do the 4th of July. We'll see. It might be the 13th of July sale. <laughs> Maybe the 13th of July sale. Oh, that's funny. Um, yes, do a sale. Um, how many dimes do they cost? Oh, that's a funny one. <laughs> so, dining on a dime is $21.95. Penny pension is $12.95. Dig out of debt is... $17.95, $12.95 for quick, and $6.95 for di uh, menus from dining. So thank you, Brad, um, for letting us know that. Um, now, did anyone have any questions? We've got just a couple minutes left. I know we've had a long week. Oh, wow, lots of people want sales. Yes, please have a sale, sale. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're gonna be shipping Thanks shipping everyone for books. the comments. Um, let's see. So, any questions on anything we did this week or about our lives in general? Is Mike really as handsome and as wonderful of a husband as he says he is, like I, as I said he was in our CFS video? Yes, he it's is. Like I'm standing on a platform. <laughs> <trying> <laughs> to tell me what yes, so we got lots of comments that... You somebody are... bid on me. Oh, <laughs> somebody bid on you. <laughs> no, he's not for sale. I need all his all his energy that I need at home here. <laughs> all right, let's see. Do we are we so are we actually planning that particular topic for next week that we were thinking, or do we not? Um. Do we well, not I don't have any particular. Well, oh yeah. So 
For next week's topic on Saturday night, Mike and I were thinking about family traditions. And this may sound kind of strange, but we do some unusual family traditions to help us keep um, having fun and the little things to help make life not so not so boring, I guess. I don't know. What do you say? <laughs> but we're... Well, like, yeah. There are a lot of people that ask us because we don't spend a huge amount of money on a lot of things. On vacations are, like, and stuff like that. We have neighbors, and how much do they spend taking their family to Disney World every year? Is it 10000 or 16000 Yeah, well, our neighbors for um, six of them spend $10,000. And people yeah. are asking us, you know, if, if, we're being, if we're abusing our children by not taking them to Disney World every year for $10,000 every year, um, <laughs> you know, how do, we, how do we keep cohesion in the family or whatever? Yeah. We, but we have a lot of traditions and things that the kids really love and i think it really bonds the family together in a way that has yeah. nothing to do with buying them <laughs> and we celebrate our anniversary every single day so we're gonna tell you how we do that twice a day oh that could be you know a little oh no <laughs> <laughs> this is a g-rated show woman <gasps> sorry <laughs> so. oh let's see so, Anne says we need to do more live shows together. Lynette and Cheryl. And, yeah. <laughs> so, see, we're a good team. Yep. <laughs> yes, I, I don't like doing them by myself. I do well with Mom or with Mike. But, yeah, we're trying to get Mom back on here. We're having internet difficulties still. We're trying to get it straightened out. So, hopefully in the next, I don't know, week or two? I hope we can get mom on here too. We think we've gotten the technical things stabilized that we were struggling with before. Yeah. Um, and if that's true, then we'll be able to add more after yeah. we make sure that everything is working great. And we were thinking about mm -hmm. having, even though Jill lives in a different state than us, we were thinking about having her join us via mm -hmm. Skype or something like that. Ooh. Yes. Be like live via satellite or something. <laughs> Ooh, oh, well, they haven't done that for years, have they? Yeah, wow. It's all been Skype. I never thought about that. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Um, I still think it's funny. I used to be the production director for a TV station, and I think we have more viewers than we had on the show at that station, <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome. So we thank you guys. Yep. Um, okay, let's see. We had a couple of questions here before we go. Um, so uh, let me say real quick. Please um, check out Deep South Homestead as up next at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So that'd be 9, right, Eastern. Um, we're going to go just a few more minutes and answer a couple questions. But they are on the Homestead Network also. And we are just loving being on there. So Tammy's going to photobomb the show. Uh, one day my cousin said she's going to she's gonna come in and, and Debbie says, send in David for the tech support. Yeah, Dave is back there help watching right now, monitoring, trying to figure out what we can do. Um, let's see. Laura says, can you talk about how to cut your cell phone bill soon? Oh, yeah. What we do, I'll just tell you kind of the short of it, but... Um, but we could do more. Yeah, we'll do more in depth, but just so that you kind of get an idea of what we do. Um, Laura, we just get the month by month plan um, at Walmart. Is that where it is? Smart Talk, Straight Talk, Straight Talk, Straight Talk. which is AT and T service here. It and how much is it? Places. It's like forty five dollars a month yeah. for the phones, and we don't pay for the kids' phones. <laughs> no. And we also don't allow no, them no, to no. have phones until they're sixteen and with the driver's license. And then they have to and pay. And they for have it. to pay. Yeah. So, although the truth is, it did come up as an issue where our, our daughter wasn't going to buy a phone when she was a driver, and then we contemplated getting her a super cheap flip phone, mm -hmm. so that we were still encouraging her to take up responsibility for buying the fancier phone for herself, but she could call us if there was something that we would, yeah. um, a situation that we didn't really want mm -hmm. her to be stuck in. Yeah. So. Um, let's see, Kat says, speaking of insurance, I have health insurance at my job and absolutely hate it. I'd love to stay home. Any advice on health insurance? Oh, boy. Well, we're kind of working on that now, so we'll probably <laughs> yeah. have to bring that up in a future. When we figure it out, um, one thing that um, you might qualify for, like, Medicaid if you're not making enough money so a lot of a lot of states now are forcing people to do that kind of thing or that is a viable option for you if you can't buy it so you might you might check your income and see because just depending on what it is you may qualify for that so that could be another um 
option for you. Um, let's see. Connie says, not many families can afford $10,000 for vacations. A good way to go in debt. Exactly. And that's what those people are doing mostly. They're yeah. living on future debt, which is stealing from yourself. Yep. And we've been on two family vacations that weren't staying with or visiting family. We, When we lived in Kansas, we would come back to Colorado, but we stayed with family and visited family. And that was a, not a vacation <laughs> at all. <laughs> But it got us out of the heat of Kansas. So, so we've been on two vacations to Missouri, to Silver Dollar City. And um, we Branson, loved it. Which is uh, an amusement park right outside of Branson. Yeah. Yep. So, um, Christian, could you drive to a national park and camp? Um, we could, although that's not real cheap really i mean it's like 35 or 40 dollars a night at the nash at rocky mountain national park so that's not really that cheap um i did find some websites that seem to show where there's cheap camping near places because i was looking at a, a national park hiking trip with one of the kids um, for super cheap. <laughs> Haven't quite figured out how that's going to work yet, but yeah. that is something that we were looking into. Um, let's see. Big and Bear. Oh. We also have a, a national forest near us where yeah. we can go. But honestly, I don't want to go camping for a vacation. I mean, I will go for the kids, but it's a lot of work. It's like the saying that I saw on Pinterest, you know, camping is where you spend a lot of money to go pretend like you're homeless. <laughs> And I like camping. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love the quiet. There's no dogs barking from all the neighbors and there's no cars. She likes day camping. I like camping. Well, I like camping, but I don't like camping with five kids. It's a lot of work for me and it really wears me out. And, you know, the kids help, but still, um, you know, it's just a lot of work and I just don't usually have the option for that. Um, Big Bear Homestead said, do you guys use coupons? No. <laughs> I I don't really use coupons and I'm still able to keep my groceries bill pretty low without a garden and without coupons. I do grow a few tomatoes and peppers, but I can garden, but I don't currently just because I'm sick. And um, we've had a lot of family upheaval recently with the last two years with my niece li coming to live with us and things like that. And so I, we still keep our grocery bill about you know, 650 somewhere around there. And that is buying everything at the store for seven of us. So, um, let's see, what is a vacation? Yeah, that's kind of what we think. <laughs> um, let's see, someone said, Frankie wants to know how do you budget your food? That sounds like a whole show for Yeah, itself. that's gonna be a whole show. Um, in a nutshell, I pretty much just buy necessities and I don't buy extra things. If the kids want things like goldfish, or um what do they like what do you like dave goldfish gobstoppers gob cheese it's things like that they use their own money to buy those kinds of things i will buy basic things but i don't use um coupons and i don't but you do pay in gobstoppers for tech support i do pay my son in gobstoppers for tech support and we give them for treats like that or for christmas presents or birthday presents um so Angela wants to know, coupons, what do you think? Well, I think they're fine if you have the time and the energy and you wanna do that. I personally don't. And my biggest problem is matching the coupons up at the store with the sales. I tried couponing and all that and what would happen was I would get to the store, they wouldn't have the items or it would be the wrong item or I would get up there and then I don't know, something would be wrong. It was the wrong sale flyer week or something. I mean. It just, I could never get it coordinated, so I didn't like that, but. Well, and we only buy name brands on certain items, and so when it's not name brand, it's less expensive to buy it without the coupon anyway. Yeah. But we do occasionally use things like, um, we, we'll use coupons occasionally for something like Cheerios, won't we? Yes, yeah, occasionally, Mike, Mike is a Cheerio snob. <laughs> I like them better than the toasty oats or whatever. Yes, so he's a Cheerio snob, so so I will do that occasionally. And but... we also use Groupons for things sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Um, let's see. 
Kat says there's a lot of websites and groups that will match coupons. Yeah, they do that and that's fine. But honestly, I don't even go grocery shopping anymore. I have my groceries delivered. I buy them online and I have them delivered and it has saved my sanity. Um, I don't take anti-anxiety medicine, but Walmart made me want to consider it. <laughs> Because going to shop there. I would go in and shop and I would physically I would physically be shaking by the time I got home because it was just too much on my system. So, um, yeah. Well the kids were just commenting the other day on how much it's changed our lives to have the groceries delivered. And of course the delivery guy knows us. Yeah. Um, but it's kinda of like going back to the old days where they brought ice to your house and milk mm -hmm. and stuff. It's kinda of cool. Yeah. Now they just had uh, full serve gas here in Colorado. That, oh, would, be... that would be wonderful because Mike gets the gas. He's just that good. I hate getting it's... gas. But it's also it would also be great if they were if they would pull the stick and check the oil every time like they used to. Yes. Because uh, a lot of our family. Yep. Um, yes, big family homestead. We do have our groceries delivered. <laughs> so it cost me seven dollars for the delivery fee. The other prices are exactly the same. Um, Walmart and Kroger is our two main stores here and Walmart will now deliver for seven dollars and so for me the cost of gas to drive into town was the same amount that's a no-brainer for me if I don't have to go shopping and I can have it delivered I am NOT a fan of Walmart I'll tell you right now I don't like them their stuff breaks but if I can get my food delivered, I'm going to take it just to make well, my life easy. Well, they bring it right easy. to the back door. They probably mm -hmm. bring it in the house if we don't yeah. want to. Yeah, I have them bring it in through the garage, and they drop it literally at my pantry. I mean, like, six inches from my pantry. So I love it. I love it. I love well, it. Well, and if so. they don't have something that we want, they'll give us a more expensive version mm -hmm. for the same price. Yeah. Which they do frequently. Mm -hmm. So if I order the generic bread and they're out of the generic bread, they'll give me the expensive bread. So... Most of the time, I'll get some form of substitute that's more expensive because I usually only buy generic brands. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, wants to let's see. Can't Chambrick, Chambrick Two Real wants to know Walmart is that in every state? I have no idea. They started the pilot program here in Colorado, and I don't know if they've. It's Walmart Grocery Delivery is what I typed into search. So type that in, and you can see. All right, guys, our time is up for today. But we'll take some of those ideas for some of those shows and yeah. make them into future shows, yeah. definitely. And if you want Mike on here with me, give me a thumbs up or give me a comment. And let me know if you want him. His handsome face here. <laughs> and yes, we are trying to get Mom back on, so we're working on that. Um, all right. Congratulations to our three winners, our four winners for our bonus. And Go check out Deep Set. Go check out Deep South Homestead right now, and please subscribe if you like this on YouTube, or if you're on Facebook, head over to YouTube and subscribe. Please, it really helps us out, and we appreciate your support, and please visit our website at... Livingonadime.com. One more time. Livingonadime.com. And where should they go? Livingonadime.com. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good weekend.